voters are being inundated with messaging and political ads. And I hope you're sitting down. This may come as a shock. Some of those political ads may be misleading. It's true. A CNN fact check found some Democrats have been the subject of attack ads that incorrectly suggest they support defunding the police. That, of course, is a phrase that became common at this point, uh, really gaining steam during the racial justice protests in 2020. What it actually means, of course, varies from person to person. So as we start to look at some of these different ads, let's tackle this one topic in particular. CNN's Daniel Dale reviewed a number of ads for a new piece on CNN.com. So first up, let's take a look at an example. This is going to come to us from California's third congressional district. Democrat Kermit Jones was targeted by this ad. This is from his Republican opponent, Kevin Kiley. And if Pelosi has her way, Jones will join her to defund the police and raise the gas tax even higher. Kermit Jones, he's not with us, he's with Pelosi. So what's the real story there on the records? This is a double dose of nonsense. It's pure fiction conjured from thin air. Not only does this candidate, Jones of California, himself oppose defunding the police, but we know that Speaker Pelosi has repeatedly dismissed that concept. She's done that in public and in interviews. Listen to two of her comments, one from this year and one from back in 2020. That is not the position of the Democratic Party. Community safety to protect and defend in every way is our oath of office. Funding of police is a local matter, as you know. Uh, from the standpoint of our legislation, we're not going to that place. What we're doing is talking about how we change policy to make our policing more just. And it's not just words. Under Pelosi speakership, Democrats have passed laws to provide additional funding to police, not to defund. So again, this ad is just completely made up. Uh, completely made up, but it gets a lot of attention, right? And that phrase certainly does. And you have another, another example out of Virginia, also a congressional race. Former CIA officer Abigail Spanberger is the target here. Uh, a group that's called Moms for Safe Streets. Take a look. And Abigail Spanberger joined AOC's effort to defund the police. Spanberger sold out our brave men and women in law enforcement for a political contribution of $5,000 from AOC. So what's the, uh, what's the record there? The record is that Congresswoman Spanberger is one of the, if not the most aggressive, vehement Democratic House opponents of defunding the police. She to she's told her colleagues that it's ridiculous. She's asked them to never use that phrase again. She's a former CIA officer and before that, a former employee of the Postal Service's law enforcement agency. So again, this is fiction. And listen to what Congresswoman Spanberger has said about a bill that provides additional funding to police. The Investor Protect Act would help get the job done of ensuring that police departments, particularly those like I represent in smaller and rural communities, have the ability to recruit and retain officers. This legislation invests in officer safety. It invests in domestic violence response training. It invests in funding the police departments like those I represent. So what does, the, what, what does this ad base its defund the police claim on? Well, it misrepresents one of her votes. In small text, that tiny text you see at the bottom of the screen, it cites a vote she took in favor of a policing reform bill. That is not a defunding bill. It promotes changes to hopefully uh, reduce police misconduct, does not cut funding to police. But this ad, without explanation, tries to cite it as a defund example when it's absolutely not. Daniel Dale, with 15 days left until the midterms, my friend, you have your work cut out for you in terms of your fact checks coming up ahead. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Well, today we've been talking a lot about early voting in Georgia. Kicks off today in Florida, and there is a major debate tonight. Joining me now to talk about all things midterms, a former Republican Congressman Francis Rooney. Good to see you this morning. Uh, nice to have you with us. So we look at this debate and a lot of focus is going to be on this debate, not just in the state of Florida, but frankly, I think plenty of national attention as well. At this point, is Charlie Chris turn as governor for the state of Florida in the past? Is it a strength or a vulnerability for him going into tonight's debate? Well, I think Ron DeSantis is a clear front runner here. And the question for Ron is how much money does he have to spend to dust off Chris? Meaning, meaning what? To dust him off, meaning is there any room, and when you say that, and we look at heading into this, is there any wiggle room for undecided voters tonight? You think there is still some, there are still some votes that can be won over two weeks out? 
you know, I don't think there's a lot of wiggle room. I think that Ron's a pretty well-known quantity now. He uh, he did what he said he would do about education, and and he did a, ve- a great job on Hurricane Ian, uh, better than some previous hurricane response and preparedness uh, activities. And I think that uh, he's e- even becoming stronger with Hispanics in the state of Florida. The, the whole uh, movement of Hispanics towards Republicans is, is a whole separate subject. So when we look at then, based on Euro 7, his strength heading into this debate, with two weeks left to go until uh, Election Day, early voting starting now, you believe it's his race to lose? Yeah, I definitely do. Remember, he carried a lot of black mothers because he promised to straighten out education, and he's done it. So I think he'll carry them again. Uh, There were over 300,000 more Republican votes in Dade County in the presidential election, most of which came from Doral, which is Venezuelans. I think that Ron will do better with a lot of Hispanics as well. When we broaden out a little bit here, so much in politics has changed at this point in 2020, including debates. We're seeing fewer of them in different states. You are seeing candidates on both sides say, hey, I'm not going to debate anymore. How important are debates in 2022 for voters? Well, I think it'd be a real shame for candidates to shy away from debating. That's a good opportunity for voters to see how they do under pressure, how they can respond and think on their feet and, and, uh, and other uh, matters that are germane to whether they'll be good at their job or not. Do you think it should be a requirement for candidates? Uh, I, I don't know if you can require particular candidate behavior but it, the voters sure ought to punish people that refuse to debate. And the when media we, should, too. When we look at, listen, we love a good debate, as you know. I don't need to tell you that. When we look at nationwide what we're seeing, there are some real chances. There are a number of election deniers on ballots in your party, and there are real chances that they could win some of these races. In some states, they could end up actually controlling elections. Do you think the Republican Party is doing enough to push back on those lies, or is this simply more about gaining seats? Well, I would prefer that uh, the Republican Party abandon these election deniers and uh, uh, recognize, as I've written, that the election was legitimately won by President Biden and move forward on a positive uh, series of, of policy points that would improve the lives of everyday Americans, like dealing with inflation, out of control spending, uh, really dealing with China instead of this on again, off again effort to to deal with them. We've got a lot of things to do in this country, and I think Republicans have historically good approaches to them. But right now, it's all confused by this cloud of Trump. You say it's confused by the cloud of Trump. There's also this looming turf war in Florida between potentially between Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. Do you think that could impact the governor's chances at all? I think that uh, as things stand right now, I think Ron would give uh, a reelected Ron would give Donald Trump a real wet run for his money in Florida and maybe some other places as well. In fact, I'm not sure that Glenn Youngkin couldn't give Trump a a good run for his money as well. Well, we will be watching and I'm sure we would talk to you about it. Nice to see you this morning. Thank you.